we are given a complex number z equals to 2 plus 2i. You are also given that imaginary zw is 0 and the modulus of zw is 3, the modulus 3 times the, 3 times the modulus of z. Use your metric reasoning to find two possible values of w. How can we be able to go about this question? Now, something uh, we need to realize in order to work out this, we, we need to appreciate the, the, the fact that zw modulus uh, can be written as modulus of z uh, times the modulus of w. So, which means that uh, this guy that we are given at this particular point can be expressed as can be expressed as can be expressed as z modulus of z times modulus of uh, w is equivalent to two uh, three times the modulus of z times the modulus of z. I've just done not, nothing, but I've just opened this modulus, and that means that um, at this given point. You can see that we can equally say these two can cancel out because they present the same thing and we end up having modulus of w is actually equal to 3. So that is um, our first uh, expression. Just we, we need to save it. It will save our life in a few minutes. So, um, but we can be able to appreciate also that um an argument but there's something we are being told that mark the, the imaginary part of uh, z times w is going to give us zero so what's that telling us imaginary of z w is actually zero so it means because a complex number a complex number is usually written x plus i y so when you are saying that uh, the imaginary part of uh, ZW is zero, it means that uh, this is a purely real number, purely real number, purely real number. So meaning uh, ZW, this number that we are talking about here is a purely real number because the imaginary part of zw is termed to be zero now when we have to agree that this is a pyre number it means that we can now be able to represent this on a, an argon diagram uh, we can be able to represent this on argon diagram and um it will mean that uh, if uh, this is a uh, imaginary axis mz and this is uh, the real z the real z and since we have said that this is a pure real number it means that our wz w or zw is going either to be at this particular point is going to be either w z1 or we can have it somewhere here w Z2. So we have two options because it cannot lie either inside any region within here because it's a purely real number. So it can either it can only lie along the axis. So meaning uh, we can now say um, this one is uh, this number will be having uh, a modulus of zero. Uh, rather, it it could be having an argument of zero. So we can say, uh, therefore, since it's a real number, since it's a real number, then it means arg of um, ZW can, a, can be equal to uh, zero or pi. It can be equal to zero or pi. So meaning this is going to be our pi. The angle from the x-axis to the other part for you to have this is going to be uh, 180 degrees which is equivalent to pi uh, or it can be it's lying on the real axis which is going to be uh, actually zero zero radians or zero uh, degrees so meaning these are the two options which are going to give us uh, this number but something that we need also to remember is that z 
uh, is there. So meaning, if you are actually having arg z, uh, okay, we need to find the argument of z. So we need to have arg z. Arg z is going to be equal to the tan inverse of um, the imaginary part divided by the, uh, the, the real part. So it's going to be 2 over 2. And if you work it out, let me just use my calculator here so that I can be able to see uh, what I'm able to get. I get my calculator and I try to, to plug in um, tan inverse of uh, 2 over 2. And that is actually going to translate to be a quarter, 1 over 4 pi. So meaning z is going to have um, 1 over 4 pi. Now, this is actually our z. Z is there. So, z is 1 over 4 pi. Now, we have said that the argument of wz is either 0. The argument of wz is either 0 or pi. But... Okay, let's uh, say this is, uh, first let's appreciate here yeah, that um, the argument of z is 1 over 4, 1 over 4 pi. That's the, that's the argument of z. But you need to remember that if you are having, if you are having, uh, this, let me just write. If you are saying r w, z w, meaning two complex numbers have been multiplied together. It means that the argument of this will be added. So it is going to be the arg of z uh, plus the arg of um, the arg of w. Remember, we are trying to find the argument of w. So meaning from here, we know the argument of the two. The argument of the two is zero or pi. So meaning that uh, when 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 the argument of zw is zero. We are going to have zero equals to argument of z. We have gotten it to be uh, one over four pi plus the argument, the argument of w, and the argument of w in this case is going to be arg w is going to be negative one over four pi. So that will bring us a point of writing now the equation. The equation of w so therefore from this we can say w is going to be written as we can be able to write it in exponential form and we can say this is going to be what's the modulus of w we had gotten the modulus of w actually the modulus of w is 3 so this is going to be 3 e to negative 1 over 4 i i that is one uh, form so another way we can be able to actually uh, write this is by considering that now arg of zw is going to be pi so that's going to be arg of zw is being pi so what can we do i have a space here where i can be able to write so we are going to say arg of zw is pi arg of zw this part here arg of zw is pi so i'm using this part arg of zw is pi so I've taken pi, is going to be equal to arg of z. Arg of z is actually a quarter, we had gotten it, uh, plus arg, arg of w. So meaning uh, arg argument of w is going to be pi minus 1 over 4 pi, and that's going to translate to 3 over 4 pi. Then once we have this, we can be able to say our... Um, our w now, the second form of w is going to be 3. Uh, the argument, uh, we have gotten it there, which is uh, 3 over 4 pi. And the modulus, already we are using the same modulus, which is going to be, which is going to be e is to 3 over 4 pi i. So that is how you can be able to use geometric reasoning in order to try to find uh, this case. So uh, let us try also to do the second case um, whereby you are using geometric reasoning and see exactly what are you expected to, 
to get in such kind of uh, a scenario. And if you are new to Proflan YouTube channel, consider subscribing so that end time you can be able to be notified. But I need to bring to your attention that this particular video we are talking about here is actually for uh, uh, Edexcel Father Pure Math. So if you are Cambridge, don't continue watching this um, because this is not for you. But if you are doing a level Father Pure Math, Edexcel, this is very, very much clear for you. And you know what that means. So I need to go straight and um, write the second equation. The second question whereby we're using geometric reasoning. Using geometric reasoning. So we are going to say uh, you are given that z equals to 1 plus i uh, root 3. You are told that 3 of uh, z squared of uh, w is actually equal to zero and further you are told that uh, z squared of uh, w but that is modulus of z squared over w is going to be equal to modulus of z so we are going to use geometric reasoning use geometric reasoning to find two positive uh, possibilities for w to find two possibilities let me just write this at the end possibilities for w giving your answer in the form giving your answer in number one i will want us to give our answer in um euler form or exponential form exponential form uh, that's a very good handwriting so we need to appreciate that and also we are going to write in the form of um modulus argument modulus form argument modulus modulus form uh, all this i uh, you know and i believe that you understand how we can be able to uh, express them because this particular video is uh, actually looking at a geometric reasoning geometric reasoning to find uh, complex numbers right so um the first thing that we need to crack down here uh, in the process of finding our solution is that um we can we can go ahead we can go ahead and try to find what is the modulus of z uh modulus of z from this part that we have here is going to be equal to one squared plus uh, root 3 squared and this is going to translate to a uh, square root of uh, 1 plus uh, 3 and that means is a square root of 4 and that means that the modulus of z is actually 2 so modulus of z is 2 but there is something we are being told here the real z the real z squared over w is equal to zero so what does that really uh, uh mean to us because if we are saying that the real z of z squared over w uh the real z squared over w is zero it means that this is telling us that this is telling us that z squared over w is a purely is a purely if the real value is zero it means it, this is telling us that z squared over w this complex number that can be generated from this is a purely imaginary number is a 
purely imaginary number. So, which means that if we're going to have an argand diagram in such kind of a scenario, of course, we know this one is um, the im imaginary z. So, I think this marker is not right. Eh? So, we are going to say that this is actually imaginary z. And this actually the real z, the real z. So we have our argon diagram at this point. So meaning that if we are going to locate this type of number on the argon diagram, it means that it's go is not is it will never be in any other region except on the imaginary part because the real part is zero. So it can either be at this point. So uh, this is going to be z squared over w is either at that particular point or it's going to be below here, anywhere, either on the lower side or the upper side. So this is going to be also z squared over w. So that's the reason as to why we are given this particular section uh, of uh, this question, which can enable us to know where are we going to have our number, this complex number, on the argon diagram. Now, we are also having this part here, which is saying that uh, z squared over w, the modulus of z squared or over the... Okay, we have a complex number, yes, z squared over w. So the modulus of z squared over w is equal to the modulus of z. And already the good thing, we know the modulus of z. So this information is going to enable you no, it's going to help you. It will help you. It will help you know the modulus of W. That's what is going to help us know. And we say this star, it will help us know where is this number going to be because we're using geometric reason. No. Using this information there, we can say this is going to be Z squared. Z squared can actually be written as z again times another z over a modulus of w is going to be equal to the modulus of z. So I can be able to multiply this on the other side and divide this modulus of z here, and then I'll end up having z modulus. Uh, you don't have to write all these steps, but I'm just writing them so that you can be able to uh, understand how we are going to go about it. So um, modulus of w is going to be what so we are going to actually cancel this guy and this guy out and we end up having that uh, z modulus z uh, need to write somewhere you can see so we end up having that uh, modulus of z modulus of z is going to be the modulus of w from this particular point we can see that the modulus of z is equal to the modulus of w. So what does that mean? The modulus of w is going to be equal to what? We had gotten the modulus of z, and that is the first thing that we had started to do, and that's going to be 2. So the modulus of w is actually 2. Now, let's go back and try to see where can we be able to locate z and where are we going to locate z squared? Remember, the argument of z can be obtained. We can be able to find arg z. Arg z is actually tan inverse of the imaginary coefficient of the imaginary part divided by 1. So this is going to be root 3 over 1. So if we work out the um, argument of z, let me just plug this into a calculator. We are going to say uh, sine inverse. I'm going to work it in radians. So that is um, actually root 3 uh, of uh, 1, and that's going to be a third. So I'm getting 1 over 3. This is actually 1 over 3 pi. So meaning that um, since the argument of z is 1 over 3, but we want to locate the position because we are talking of z squared, I want to find the argument argument of z squared is actually z times z so um, is the same as argument of z squared is actually uh, arg of z plus arg of z 
because z squared is the same as z times z. Is it really clear at that point? We need space. And which part do we can we use? Already we have known um, this part. So no, let me maybe let me just write here. Let me write at this point. So we are at the point whereby we are finding them the, the argument of z squared because I need to plot uh, z squared on the argon diagram. So arg of uh, z, I've gotten it to be 1 over 3 pi. So arg of z squared is going to be, is the same as, actual arg of, uh, uh, is the same as arg of z times z. So which means arg z plus arg z is going to be 1 over 3 pi plus 1 over 3 pi, which is going to be actually 2 over 3 pi. So z squared, yeah, so uh, we need to represent this on the argon diagram. So our z squared is actually going to be somewhere here. Is going to be having is 2 over 3 pi. So this is uh, the argument for z squared. Now, how are you going to get w? Because uh, once we have our z squared argument and we know the modulus of uh, w, so we are going to say. Because these two numbers are divided, z squared divided by w. So we can say argument of z squared over w is actually the same as argument of z squared minus argument of w. So when you have this, Argument of z squared divided by w is actually the argument of z squared minus the argument of w. So that will mean, since we know the argument of uh, z squared over w, we were told that is actually purely an imaginary number because we were told this is zero. We had agreed on that. It means it can be either positive, positive a half or negative a half so we can agree that argument argument of z squared over w is going to be equal plus or minus one over two pi so we can now use this value and the argument of z squared in order to get the argument of w so we can now go ahead and now say that um uh now, the first case when, when arg z squared over w is equal to positive a half pi, we now find the value of w. This is going to be using this relation that uh, I gave out here, which is z squared minus, that will be that. So it will be 1 over 2 pi is equal to. Uh, argument of z squared is this, which is going to be 2 over 3 pi minus. Now we can say let the argument of zw be beta. Uh, the argument of z, let's say the argument of w, let's say the argument of w is beta. So, um, so we can say it's minus beta is equal to that. So our beta is going to be 2 over 3. 2 over 3 pi minus 1 over 2 pi. And if you work it out, let me use my calculator. 2 over 3 pi minus 1 over 2 pi. I'm going to get, I'm, I'm getting 1 over 6 pi. 1 over 6 pi. And now that becomes uh, the argument of W. Now, using that argument of W that we have gotten, we can be able to write. Um, the complex number w. So uh, you can allow me to make use of this point because um, we are ex ex expressing the exponential form. 
So the first form of W is when the argument of W is 1 over 6 pi. So, and remember we had said the modulus of W is equal, is equal to the modulus of Z, which is actually equals to 2. So we're going to say this is going to be 2 exponent 1 over 6 pi i. That's one form of um, W. So another form that we're going to find is when we shall now say that, um, so that's going to be, this is going to be negative a half pi is equals to 2 over 3 pi, 2 over 3 pi minus beta, the modulus of uh, this. So we are going to say uh, this can be given us, this will become beta because if we take beta on the other side and we bring uh, 1 over 2 pi on this side, we are going to have our beta being equal to 2 over 3 pi plus 1 over 2 pi. So if we simplify that, if we add the two, what are we going to get? 1 over 2 is being added to 3 over 2, or rather 2 over 3 pi. And that becomes actually uh, 7 over 6. This becomes 7 over 6 pi. So the argument for W is going to be 7 over 6 pi. So meaning the second form of W is when it's 2, e to 7 over 6 pi i. So that is in a exponential form. So in argument modulus form, the first one w is going to be equal to 2 into cos 1 over 6 pi plus i sine 1 over 6 pi. And uh, that is the second one will be w2 is uh, 2 into cos 7 over 7 over 6 pi plus i sine 1 over uh, rather 7 over 6 pi. So basically that's how you use geometric reasoning in order to work out questions like this.